What's up, Pillow Gang? Kill him softly here with a tips and tricks video on how to be a better soldier in Battlefield 5. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy around Battlefield 5 right now about gameplay balancing, UI elements, things like that. But I'm just going to put those issues aside and maybe save them for another video. And I'm just going to teach you how to be successful with the core game mechanics that already work in the game. And I want to discuss the medic class first because I know it's people struggling with this class the most and it's probably because the medic class in Battlefield 5 requires the highest skill of all of the classes in order to use effectively. So the basic medic setup in Battlefield 5 is going to be a close range SMG and you're going to have a throwable med pouch or a deployable med crate that you're going to be using to heal your teammates. And in your secondary equipment slot, you're either going to have a smoke grenade rifle or a bouncing Betty. The first thing you want to know about the medic setup is that the SMGs are built for close quarters combat, and I cannot stress that enough. You're going to be using hip fire and tap fire a lot with the weapons in this class, especially if you want to engage with people at longer ranges, even if it is to just get some bullets down range to get the enemy off your back so you can take cover and heal or gain a flank on their position, you'll want to use hip fire or tap fire. And the weapons in the medic class all have a specialization branch that cater towards that hip fire. And you'll want to take advantage of that, especially if you're just starting out in a weapon, like you're just leveling it up until you get to level four, you can't really move your specializations a lot. So focus on that hip fire first in order to get used to the weapon and then you can kind of branch out and pick different skill trees to cater to your playstyle. but mostly you're going to be using the hip fire in the medic class because again it's close quarters you want to be in close engagements with your enemy and take advantage of that high rate of fire and burst damage you know if you're forced into a longer range engagement tap fire is viable. If you ADS and use tap fire, you can get away with it, but it's not going to be your bread and butter. You, you'll still want to, you know, stay within that close to mid range engagement in order to be effective with your weapon. Battlefield 5 medics are a lot different than previous Battlefield games, mainly because of the weapons that they're using. Past Battlefields, you know, like Battlefield 1, you've got DMRs and SLRs that are like sniper precise, you know, you can engage with people across the map. Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 had medics with assault rifles, and then, you know, like Bat Company 2 had medics with LMGs. So the medics, they're, they're a lot different in this game. It's a little more nuanced, it takes a little more thought to engage with people. You know, I think it's pretty balanced even despite all of the hate that the medics have been getting so far in Battlefield 5. The, the main reason people are going on Reddit and complaining about medics and saying that medics are trash is because they're expecting to win in any engagement range. And medics in Battlefield 5 are just not built for long range engagements and it takes a more calculated approach to fight at those ranges. And you know this doesn't make medics trash. Um, all of the tools that you need to engage outside of your weapons range are provided to you by DICE. And it's actually a pretty smart way to balance the class and it's probably the most thought out way that I've seen them balance medic gameplay yet and you know don't forget the medic class is the only class that can self heal like they can infinitely heal themselves so if you get tagged by an enemy like get covered use your bandage freely like you can use it as many times as you want to and that gives the medic the abilities to survive in engagements where other classes would succumb to the attrition on the battlefield. Overall, the biggest tool at your disposal is going to be your smoke grenade rifle. And I see a lot of medics on the battlefield using their smokes, and that's a good thing. But, you know, I see them using smokes in pretty thoughtless ways, and the smoke is your biggest tool as a medic to be able to gain a flank on a position, to be able to push up on the battlefield, to be able to obscure the enemy's vision so you can get that revive off. And the majority of medics that I see 
are using their smokes, but they're actually hurting their team the way that they're using them, and they don't even realize it. Some of the ways that you can be deploying smoke and hurting your team are things like deploying smoke on top of a down teammate. I know this may seem like a good idea, and in certain instances it can be a viable tactic. But if you aren't careful, you're likely giving away your position and just simultaneously making it more difficult for the teammates around you to engage with the enemy or give you covering fire. And the second thing is deploying smoke in directly in front of you because you're getting shot at. Just because you're getting shot at doesn't mean that let me drop the smoke so the enemy can't see me. You know, again, it seems like a good idea, but you're actually just creating the same scenario that I just explained and you're just putting yourself at a disadvantage. Even with the old 3D spotting gone in the game, no more Doritos and everybody's visible across the map and things like that, even with that stuff gone, it's still very possible for somebody to spot you through smoke, even though that you just threw it in front of you like you're hidden now. But a support class, all they have to do is suppress you and bam, you're lit up like a Christmas tree. So again, you're, you're, you're just hurting yourself by deploying smokes in that way. The third thing that I've seen medics doing is deploying smoke on an objective that you have to arm or defuse. I see it happen more times than I care to admit, but it just makes it harder for you to arm or defuse an objective because if you can't see the enemy, you're at a disadvantage. And just because you smoked out an objective, and you're able to arm it, you can't see an enemy defusing it. You know, an enemy can run in there just as easy as you just armed it and defuse it. So deploying the smokes in a way that hinders yourself is what you don't want to be doing as a medic. You don't want to be hindering your visibility. You don't want to be hindering your team's visibility. What you want to do with the smokes is hindering the enemy's visibility. So the more effective way to handle these situations is simply by changing the way you think about the smoke placement. If you consider how all of those poor tactics can disable your team, you can reverse them to disable the enemy team instead. Um, deploy smoke between your soldier and the enemy. That's my main point, is that you want the smoke to be in between your location and the enemy. Like, breaking lines of sight on the enemy is the most important thing about smoke placement. If you've got an enemy firing at you downrange, Deploy a smoke between you and the enemy. Don't shoot the smoke right on top of yourself because, again, you're just exposing yourself and you can't see anything anymore. So what you want to do is deploy the smoke between your enemy and yourself, and that way you're blocking lines of sight instead of just obscuring where you're at. But think about it like you're putting up a wall that the enemy can't see over. You know, you're putting that smoke there so the enemy can't see you. You just want the enemy to be at a disadvantage. So you can even use smokes like this on defense and shoot smoke into an enemy's base or where they're pushing from in order to halt their advance. This will force the enemy to push from a different route or you know, if they're feeling brave, they can run through it, but guess what? They're gonna walk through the other side and you're gonna be able to see them against a white smoky background and get some easy kills. So once you apply the school of thought, you'll find a whole new world of opportunities presents themselves to your medic, and you're able to be more effective on the battlefield. And the smokes are the key to that. You know, you've got an enemy shooting at you outside of your engagement range, you just shoot a smoke on their location. Now you block their vision and you've exposed their position. And now they have to relocate. And that gives you time to escape or revive a teammate or gain a flank on their position which that's the type of thinking that you want to have as a medic. You want to be smart about your smoke placement. So just like your smoke placement, you want to be smart about reviving your teammates. You don't want to just run out there, you know, stabbing at squirming bodies with a syringe like your John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. That's not what you want to do. You want to be smart about your revive. You want to figure out how did my teammate get down? Am I able to run out here and revive them? If I try to go out here and revive this teammate, am I gonna get mowed down by MG42? Am I gonna get sniped by a sniper? Try to figure out, are you in a good position to be able to revive this teammate? Because if you aren't, you're only helping the enemy team out by giving them another ticket and by eliminating your medic support by being able to heal your teammates, being able to revive your teammates. 
The revive mechanic in Battlefield 5 is a little different because all of the classes are able to revive as long as they're within the squad. They can revive their squad members. But the medics in Battlefield 5 still hold the advantage in reviving because they're able to revive a lot faster. So before you revive, some things you want to consider is, you know, how did that teammate get down? Um, you know, you need to decide the likelihood that you survive the attempt. Two, check out the minimap. The minimap isn't the same as it's been in the past Battlefield games. Like, you don't have a bunch of dots running around on the minimap, but it still provides a lot of information about the enemy's position and it can give you critical information when you're going to revive a teammate. The third thing being that you can use your ears to try to figure out is there an enemy close by? Can you hear enemies running around? Did you hear a sniper take out your your teammate? Did you hear machine gun fire take out your teammate? You're able to kind of ascertain the location of the danger in that situation and say you know, are they behind cover? Am I able to revive them? You know, is there an enemy waiting nearby for, to just take me out as soon as I try to revive this person? Safely reviving teammates is critical in every game mode since your team's ticket count is a large factor in who emerges victorious. And since squad members are able to revive each other, all of these tips are very useful for successful squad play too. Alright guys, so that about wraps up my tips about medic gameplay. Obviously, a lot of these tips are subjective and they don't account for every situation, but just keeping these tactics in mind when you're on the battlefield is going to help you be more effective for your team. If you enjoyed this content, smack that like button. If you have some thoughts, criticisms about it, leave me a comment below. You can keep up with my schedule and gaming discussions on Twitter and also join the stream on Twitch to see all the potato aiming in full force. Stay soft, gang.